Would you join me in the call to worship? Open our eyes, God of wisdom, to your movement, movements. Grant us awareness of your manifestations. Open our lives, Holy Spirit, within and among us. Make us visible to our community and its people. Amen. Now let us stand and join our voices in the singing of hymn number two, How Great Thou Art.
Please be seated. And before Matt uh, leads us in the invocation, I took the uh, opportunity to not sing during that so I could listen to the sanctuary be filled with sound, and it was wonderful. Hear now the invocation. Loving God, as we gather in worship this Sunday, we pray that we feel your Holy Spirit falling afresh upon us. As it falls freshly upon us, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Grant us the vision to see the advent of your kingdom. Help us to celebrate the glimpses of grace that you have given to each of us. Knit our hearts together in worship and communion so that we may know so that we know we do not struggle alone in working for your peace and justice. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. We'll be beginning this Sunday with Dear Lord. Dear Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the
Isn't it wonderful having a full choir back up there? We are bl blessed be his name, but we are blessed to have Donna come share with us our children's message, and I'm going to come get this wired over to her. So any of the youngsters in the crowd, we're going to have you come over and see Donna.
Yeah. Yep. True enough. So we're all made of the same stuff, but um, if we're all made of the same stuff, how did, how can we turn out differently? Huh? If we're all made of the same stuff. Made us taller than the same stuff. Yep, some of us are taller. Yep, it always depends on all the directions that our DNA has for making us. Well, there's some ways that even though we're all the same, we're all different, but how about the fact that God said he wrote something in your heart? And it's right in here. Okay? One of my favorites. It says, okay, you ready? Okay. It, it says here, I will put my law within them, and on their heart I will write it. So is it written on your heart? What God is? Who God is? Does everybody have a piece of it? Yes. Yeah, it's pretty much all the same, right? So in many ways, well, in many ways we have, um, uh, we've all got this piece of God inside of us. And when we look around here, guys, look around here. Look up, look at all those faces. When I see all those faces, there's a part of me in my heart that knows that I love them and they love me and we can see God in each other, right? Well, when I was looking this up today, guess what I found in here? I said, well, I got to see what that is. And then I found this note from somebody that's sitting in here and they have the same love in their heart because it's written in their hearts, okay? God wrote it there. He gave you each a piece of himself. Now listen to this. This person wrote this, I don't know how many years ago, to enjoy each moment, to enjoy each friendship, to make the most of each child's delight to make the most of each friend's happiness, to make the most of time we share with those who may not have time, to serve and be served, to love and be loved, and give thanks. And it's signed Eleanor Menzer. Aww. She's right back there. She probably doesn't even remember. <laughs> but see, Eleanor's got this part of her, too. She's got this part of her. Okay? And we know that part is because God gave each of us a piece of himself. Now, I got two other ones here, but one of them is, was uh, from the day Matthew first went to college. I found it in my Bible when I got home. It says, pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got one from Carol. She loved Cardinal, so she, she wrote that. So I've kept these in here no matter what. Because God has given each of us a piece, okay? He's given each of us a piece of himself. So we kind of know each other that way. All right, so let's see. Manuals, I will let you, in this basket are the ones that you are allowed to take. And you can take just one. I guess Emmanuel wants to pick first. Okay. Okay, you can have one of these, and you can choose one. You can choose one from this, except that you can use one, choose one from there. Okay. Yeah. Well, look them all over. Make sure you get the one you want. Because you only have one. Boy, Lila is looking at everything. Is that, that's a geode. That's one of the ones that's cut in half. Okay, everybody set? Yes. Oh, did you get one of these? Okay. You know, I kind of like those uh, smooth ones because they kind of remind me of me. Life sort of rolls you around and you get smoother as you get older. <laughs> you get wrinklier but smoother. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Okay, so let's pray. All right. God, we know that you have made everything, and we know that we are made of the same stuff that makes stars. 
And that is amazing to me. I thank you that you put your word and your heart in everybody. So we know exactly a little part of each other because you're there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm here to read the scripture reading. And uh, today we're going to read Ephesians um, 4 from 1 to 7. And you can find that on page 951. And um, I'll read f first, and then you read second, and back and forth until we read seven together. All right. I therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. With all making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of this gift. Thank you. Now we come to a time that uh, many of us have, are very much looking forward to, and I know of three people who maybe is not quite so looking forward to it. Uh, Nancy and Ginny and Bev are going to share with you today uh, some thoughts, some things. What I will share with you first is what I wrote to them when I asked them, so you get a little bit of the context. Uh, if you need to have a concrete vision, perhaps you can uh, think of that picture I showed the children when I had the dog licking, um, drinking in the water and having it ripple out. Uh, God's love ripples out, and it keeps rippling. And it come, it's been coming for a long time, it's going through us, and it keeps going. And so here's, here's what I share with, with those uh, people who are graciously going to share with you. And perhaps we could call this series, and this comes from Ginny, whatever comes out of my mouth will be from my heart and all of the ripples that I have received. That's the title. So I, here's what I share with, the, with them. Thank you so much for agreeing to share today, sharing a or part of a story. The plan at this point will be for me to introduce the message portion by saying there is no preconceived message other than God's love ripples out through others, to us, through us, and that each of you will be sharing a story, a story of that manifestation in your life. If it is a help, don't think of this as preaching. Don't think of this as preaching. You will be sharing, telling a story with friends. Let the story you are going to share speak. Give it the air it needs. There is no doubt Again, to these three people, your church family will be eager to hear what you share. So we are going to go in. Nancy is going to lead us off because she's right here. And then Ginny is going to be going second. And Bev will end us. So, Nancy, would you please share with us? Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to read 
a little bit more than just speak because I do better that way. So pardon me if my eyes are not on you. When asked to share a time when I experienced the ripple of God's love in my life, I couldn't think of one example. I realize that my life is made up of a multitude of ripples. In order to experience the ripples of God's love, we have to be in the right place with the right people, and we aren't wise enough to choose where and who those people are. I'd like to share a quote by C.S. Lewis. In friendship, we think we have chosen our peers. In reality, a few years difference in the dates of our birth, a few more miles between certain houses, the choice of one university instead of another, the accident of a topic being raised or not raised at a first meeting, any of these chances might have kept us apart. But for a Christian, there are, strictly speaking, no chances. A secret master of ceremonies has been at work. Christ, who said to the disciples, Ye have not chosen me, I have chosen you, can truly say to every group of Christian friends, Ye have not chosen one another, but I have chosen you for one another. The friendship is not a reward for our discriminating and good taste in finding one another out. It is the instrument by which God reveals to each of us the beauties of others. So I want to share three examples of God's placement of people in my life where I experienced the ripples of his love emanating from others. Just because I lost my father at a young age didn't mean I wouldn't know a father's love. God gave me a grandpa and uncles, a brother and a father-in-law who delivered that love. They didn't have to, but they did. Among many lessons, grandpa taught me to drive a tractor, and I knocked his fence down in the learning. My uncles took turns taking me to an annual Girl Scout father-daughter sweetheart dance. My brother served as a role model, setting high standards, which I strove to meet. He also taught lessons like why you shouldn't throw the oar of a sinking boat out of the boat. He jumped out and swam to shore, and I remained in the sinking boat without the oar. My father-in-law took me to be his own, and I was loved as his daughter. God placed these people in my life in order that I might know a father's love. Next, my husband Gordon came into my life when we were working part-time jobs during college. He asked me out, and after vetting him with a friend, I said yes. After our first date, I went home to tell my roommate I had met the man I was going to marry. Before I really knew him, certainly before I loved him, I had the knowledge that God had chosen him for me. Almost 51 years later, he is still the love of my life, not because we chose each other, but because God chose us for each other. God's love rippled down to us. And finally, this church. It was Gordon's idea to move to Vermont. I was hesitant because we had no job prospects at the time, but I trusted him and we came. I was searching for a new church home when we moved to Lincoln, and I decided to try United Church of Lincoln. I came and I felt God's presence in this place. It is here in all of you. I really don't think I chose you call. God chose this family, this community, to nurture my faith and experience his love, which ripples through you. He brought me to this place to once again know how much he loves me. 
Experiencing ripples of God's love this way relies not only on God, but on our desire for God's will. And another quote by C.S. Lewis, there are two kinds of people, those who say to God, thy will be done, and those to whom God says, all right then, have it your way. <laughs> we receive God's love and give God's love by seeking and doing his will. If we allow him to, he puts us in the right place with the right people and then stirs the water so we can experience those love ripples. It's okay to applaud. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy, for blessing us with that. Ginny. Good morning. Good morning. I was going to shoot from the hip today, and now I wish I'd written it all down. <laughs> I um, truly feel like a chosen one. I've, I have felt God's ripples pouring over me um, for a long, long time. Um, I've been blessed with great friends and, and this church and family, and um, I've been truly taken care of um, for a long time. Um, I could start way back, um, but I only have five minutes, so I want to talk about my first feeling of true love was when I walked into the program of Alcoholics Anonymous and the unconditional love that I received there. And that is a spiritual program and that's what brought me back to God after leaving for several years. I learned how to get hugged in that program. Um, there was a guy named Jim there that always wanted to hug me and I wasn't comfortable with it, but I did it. And um, so I just got so many gifts, and so many of my best friends were in that program and brought me back to God, which brought me looking for a church. Um, and Matthew or Melissa do not remember this story, but they told me at field days to, to please come and visit their church. Um, and I did, and I've been here ever since. And this church family has totally and completely carried me at times when I've needed it the most. Um, people that stand out in my mind, you all do. You all hold a sp special place in my heart. But um, Randy Rice, um, the day John passed, um, Randy Rice showed up in that blizzard down at Porter Hospital in that emergency room, and that was God's rippling love. Um, Randy always um, had the right things to say, and that day he gave me the ride home from him and I were the last two in the emergency room with John, and uh, he gave me a ride home in that blizzard that day, and, um, and it was... It was very special and um, the best thing that could have happened to me. Um, and Randy is the one who um, kind of got John coming to church. This is John. Um, the Sunday school uh, made this after he passed. And you can tell that John's crying in this picture. He is so touched with the ripples of God's love from those kids. Um, and here is John and Glenn. Glenn is Paul, and John is the Roman guard watching over Paul. And um, this, this was not the man I married. <laughs> but through this church and all the ripples of God's love, through the church, through me, I came to church for a year before he did. Um, he caught on, and he came, and as my kids said, he began to run the place. <laughs> um, also, Lorraine Patterson has to be mentioned, because for the first 
year, maybe it was two years, I got a note every single week from her after John passed, and she did have a theme. It was uh, the hand of God. Every week there was a message about the hand of God. Um, she did not ever miss a week as sending me a note or uh, got a Bible verse or something that lifted me up. Um, Ruth Coyle, I have to remember her. I went through the box this week of sympathy cards that I received when John passed away. Ruth writes to me, this home will always be open for you to, to be still and alone or rant and rave and scream. Whatever you need, this space will be for you, for your healing. Love, Ruth. And I just, I loved that, and I loved Ruth. Also, a note here from Donna Wood to add a little humor. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. We want you to know how much we love you. Keep you in our hearts and prayers every day. These kittens just had to be sent to you. Couldn't you take them home and just hold them and cuddle them all day? I can't. I can just imagine their softness and smell. We love you, Donna and Dave. Um, that was so Donna. And um, if anything else, no, that's my bag of tricks. Um, <laughs> so it just goes on and on. And still today, Steve and I continue to come to church and grow. And um, the love ripples down on us from this family and hopefully rippling out from us as well. Um, and then I have just a little prayer I wanted to say. The ripples of your love, Lord, are everlasting. To today, Lord, let me serve you with my heart, my soul, and my mind, and then let me rest in the knowledge of your unchanging and constant love for me. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jenny. Beverly, I'm not going to say we're saving the best till last because that would just, I'm going to say we welcome you. You're sharing. <laughs> Better take your headset off, brother. Yep. I didn't want to take it completely off. I'm just going to do that. All right, boss, is that in the right place? <laughs> and because of Jim, I wrote it all down. He knows I love to talk, and you all know I love to talk. And if I didn't have it written down, I wouldn't stick to five minutes anywhere near. I've had many years to experience the ripples of God's love. The ripples have come from many directions, friends, neighbors, church, including you folks, uh, the young and the old, and especially my family. So that's where I'm focusing today. The ripples have come down through the generations, as indicated by my great-grandparents' names on one of the windows in the choir loft the one with the crown and the star. My family went to the Quaker Meeting House on Quaker Street, then to the Methodist Church. I grew up regularly attending church with my parents, the United Church of Lincoln. Think back a minute to the 1800s. My mother was born in 1889, the late 1800s. She was a teacher in schools and at home. We studied every page of a big, thick Bible story book. She tied my Sunday school take-home papers into booklets, indicating that they were special. She taught me that I should always do what is right. Daddy was an older was older. He was born in 1875. He quietly 
set a fine example by the way he lives and the way he lived his faith. As a little girl, I loved being with him, helping to putty windows, using a draw shave in the barn, salting hides under the barn, and throwing chunks to be burned in the furnace through the cellar hole window. Later, he had health problems, and mother had a lot of responsibilities. But I sensed that our home was built on a firm foundation. Daddy's sister, Aunt Carrie, lived on Quaker Street. I have fond memories of spending time with her and looking through some of her treasures, seashells, sewing baskets, old bottles. I remember her old wooden phone on the wall. I don't know how many of you folks are going to remember this type phone. With the earpiece hanging on the side and hearing about the lightning shooting out across the room from the mouthpiece that protruded out from the front. She gave me this little bottle packaged so carefully. Oh, sorry. I just was so impressed with the way she packaged it, with her little ripple around it. Oh, that's so sweet. And when I say little bottle, I do mean little. Wow. And there's a note in it that was undated. This is what the note read. Beverly. Do you remember when you found a blown glass bottle in the box of others up in the kitchen chamber up home on Quaker Street? I have found another in a box of things that were Grandma Gove's. I wanted to give it to you, so here it is. I wouldn't be surprised if it was one of her father's Benjamin Tabor's medicine bottles. He was the first doctor in the town of Lincoln. Anyhow, I believe it's very old and antique. And this is her speaking <laughs> several years ago. I'm so glad you can be at home at this time. Lovingly, Aunt Carrie. I don't know what year it was, but I suspect I was in college. And sometimes in college, I didn't get home on Christmas holidays. These and other family members of faith have certainly been an influence in my life with their ripples. What a blessing it is to be exposed to some of the ripples. And uh, for those of you who are saying, boy, I, I'd love to be able to share that, you may have your chance. <laughs> Let us now stand as one and lift our voices with hymn 546, We Are God's People.
We are the body of which the Lord is head. He wills us be a family, diverse yet truly one. Let us give our gifts to God, and so shall his work on earth be done.